Hello and welcome back to the lesson. Today we are going to study the characteristics, the benefits and limitations of the cooperative model, which is one of the board governance models that we will be studying in this chapter. The subtopic is cooperative board model. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the features of a cooperative board model, the benefits and the limitations. So first of all, what is a cooperative board model? Now, a cooperative, a cooperative board model refers to a distinct system of organizational structure and decision making within a cooperative enterprise. It is based on the principle of democratic, um, uh, the principles of democracy. It is based on the principles of democracy, equity, and mutual benefit, where members collectively own and control the organization. So cooperatives can take many forms, including worker cooperatives, consumer cooperatives, and other producer cooperatives. So in a worker cooperative, for example, the employees own and manage the company together, while in a consumer cooperative, the consumers are the owners and have a say in how the company operates. So it's important for you to understand that a cooperative model is a distinct system of organizational structure and decision making within a cooperative enterprise or a cooperative organization. So what are the characteristics of a cooperative board model? Now, the first characteristic is democratic member control. democratic member control. The foundation of cooperative governance is the democratic member control. That is to say that each member has an equal vote irrespective of their financial contribution and that ensures equitable participation in decision-making processes. So that's characteristic number one. Number two, is voluntary and open membership. Voluntary and open membership. The membership is voluntary and open, meaning that cooperatives are open to all individuals who have, who, who share, individuals who share uh, their common goals, and are willing to accept, accept the, the responsibilities of membership without any discrimination based on social, that is based on political, or that is based on economic factors. Voluntary and open membership. Three, member economic participation. member economic participation. Members contribute to their cooperative's uh, capital and also share in its financial success based on the utilization of its services or products rather than solely on their investment. That is member economic participation. Number four, autonomy and independence. Autonomy and independence. Now, cooperatives are autonomous entities controlled by their members and they operate independently from external influences, allowing them to prioritize the interests of their community. That is a characteristic of cooperative board model. 
Five is in relation to information, education, and training. Education, training, and information. How is education, training, and information a feature of a cooperative board model? Now, cooperatives prioritize the education and training of their members, their employees, and also their leaders in order to enhance the understanding of cooperative principles and to empower them to contribute effectively to the organization's growth and success. Education, training, and information. Six, concern for the community. Concern for the community. Now, cooperatives are deeply rooted in their communities and actively contribute to their social, economic, and environmental uh, well-being through various initiatives and programs. And the cooperative governance model presents a unique approach to organizational structures and decision making with both um, emphasis on community building. Concern for the community is a characteristic of a cooperative model. Now let us now turn to discuss the benefits of this model. Benefits of cooperative board model. The first obvious benefit is democratic participation. Democratic participation. Now, how is democratic participation a benefit? Now, cooperative governance promotes democratic participation and equal voting rights for all members, which fosters a sense of ownership and engagement in the organization's affairs, where every member spot counts candidates that is a benefit because every member will feel acknowledged, every member will feel a sense of ownership and also engagement in the affairs of the organization. There is equitable distribution of benefits, equitable distribution of benefits. The board governance model ensures equitable distribution of benefits. Profits are distributed among members based on their participation or usage of the cooperative services rather than on capital investment. That, that leads to a more equitable allocation of resources. Three, community focus. Community focus. Cooperatives prioritize the needs of the members and the broader community, contributing to local development and social well-being of the community. That is a benefit. The fourth benefit is in relation to resi resilience. The cooperative model can be more resilient to economic um, downturns due to its diverse ownership and focus on member needs rather than solely on profit maximization. Five, autonomy. Autonomy is an advantage. Cooperatives are self-governed and independent from external control allowing them to make decisions that align with their values and align with their goals. So these are five benefits.
How about limitations? Limitations. What are limitations of cooperative board models? Now, the first limitation or challenge is in relation to decision making. Decision making. One, decision making is a challenge. Decision making challenges. Now, democratic decision making can be slow, it can also be cumbersome, especially in larger cooperatives with diverse memberships leading to potential delays and conflicts. There may also be limited access to capital. Limited access to capital. Cooperatives may face challenges in raising capital due to their unique structure and restrictions on external investment. There are some that may also lack professional management, lack of professional leadership or, or management. Lack of professional management. Now, some cooperatives may struggle to attract and retain skilled professional managers, opting for member, member leaders who may lack the necessary expertise. Four, risk aversion. What is the meaning of risk aversion in the context of limitations of cooperative board model? Now, that means that the focus on member needs and uh, community well-being may lead to risk aversion and reluctance to pursue innovative or potentially lucrative ventures. Because the focus is mainly on the needs of the members and the community, the cooperatives may not be willing to take on a project that may be deemed to be risky. There could be five free rider problems free rider problems free rider problems some members may take advantage of the cooperative's benefits without contributing their fair share leading to resentment among other members so these are some of the limitations of the cooperative board model so we have identified five benefits. One, democratic participation. Two, equitable distribution of benefits. Three, community focus. Four, resilience. Five, autonomy. These are five benefits. Then there are six characteristics of cooperative board model. One is democratic member control. Number two, voluntary and open membership. Number three, member economic participation. Number four, autonomy and independence. Number five, education, training and information. Number six, concern for the community. Concern for the community. Within this lesson also highlighted five limitations of cooperative board model. The first one being decision-making challenges. Number two, limited access to capital. Number four, lack of professional management. Number five, risk aversion. Number six, free rider problems. Before we take a break, allow me to read out today's assignment. Cooperative model, I have four questions for you. Number one, how does the cooperative governance model promote democratic decision making within an organization? Number two, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cooperative models in terms of operational efficiency and member satisfaction? Number three, how can a cooperative organization balance the diverse interests of its members while pursuing common goals? Number four, what mechanisms can be put into place to resolve conflicts and ensure effective governance in a cooperative model? Thank you for attending the lesson. In our next session, we are going to study the management team model. Bye-bye.